What is good guys man, thank you for tuning back into the channel man If you're new, make sure you hit that sub button down below to be notified for every single video that I drop man As y'all can see by the title, she's speaking about demons She said demons are real man, during her testimony man And uh, I was just talking to a female over the phone and she said she don't believe in demons She don't believe in, you know, certain type of spiritual things, you know what I'm saying But... Without further ado, y'all comment down below exactly what y'all think about this video. You know what I'm saying? Without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into it. Make sure y'all hit that sub button. Follow the Instagram. Follow my two YouTube channels that's at the top right here, man. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into what she's talking about. You want to know if demons are real? They are. Because I saw them. I saw them on the mission field. I saw, you know, a mountain woman with her eyes totally black and has no life in her because there's demons in her. My name is Ashley Edwards, and I am 35. I, um, I got saved when I was uh, five years old. A little bit of uh, story, a little bit of background of how I got saved is that my family, um, my dad was a Catholic and my mom was a Jehovah Witness. And so if you ever encounter those two, it's like a bomb exploding in our house. So as I grew up, there was a lot of fighting over religion. Um, and I'm the youngest of six, so um, my oldest sister is 18 years older than me. So, um, for my what my mom, what she told me was that when she was like 17, she started to follow after um, Jehovah Jehovah Witness religion. And so, by the time I was born, I would say she followed that for maybe four or five years. So she became born again. And so, when I was about five, she. Um, she she led me to the Lord. And it was, you know what's crazy about it is like, I absolutely knew at five that he was real. And I absolutely knew that I needed a savior. I knew that like I was in darkness, I knew it. And so I legit could feel the moment that I gave my heart over to him that something changed inside of me. And so from about five years old, I remember loving Jesus and I remember, um, Sometimes walking outside and looking up at the clouds, I could hear him call my name. I could, like, I just knew that there was this nearness to him, that he was near. And so um, I knew for sure that he was, he was so real to me. And so from then, um, my, my sister would begin to take me to these, like, Holy Spirit, like, prayer meetings and things when I was five. And I remember distinctly lifting my hands before the Lord. I remember just crying and um, just so, like, just remember feeling the Lord so real to me. Um, but eventually, you know, my dad, once he got a whiff that my sister was taking us to these places, he's like, oh, no, you need to come to catechism classes. Oh, no, I got to bring you to the Catholic Church. Oh, no. So, uh, so it was very much a battle of um, Christianity in my house. And um, he would give me um, these little, like, See, when you when you get married or you, you know, saying trying to pursue somebody, y'all got to be on the same playing field. That's why in the Bible it said you have to be equally yoked with somebody. You don't want to bring two religions into the households because it's going to cause a hailstorm. You know what I'm saying? It's basically these religions are meant to divide us. You know what I'm saying? But when you find somebody, you definitely have to be equally yoked, man. It's really going to mess up a lot of stuff inside of the household. But let's get back into it, though. Little, he would give me these little Mary trinkets and, like, Saint so-and-so. And, to, and so I was supposed to, like, he would tell me I was supposed to pray to this saint for this reason and to Mary for this reason. And, and as a kid, like, I was probably, like, seven at this point. I'm like, I don't understand why I've been talking to Jesus this whole time. Why do I have to talk to these other things? Um, so I... And I, there was a pull in my heart because I wanted to believe my dad and I wanted my, I knew but my dad really did love the Lord. Um, I would find him on his knees doing his rosaries. I would find him, you know, passionately after God in the way that he, but something just didn't click with me with it. And um, especially we would go to the Catholic church and I'd be like, this thing is boring. I can't even understand anything they're saying. And so... But when I was with my sister and um, came across Christian believers, I, I felt God. I felt like he was near. So, um, so there was a little bit of guilt and I, I have confusion growing up 
um, in a house like that. And so I told the Lord, I said, God, I just want to know truth. Um, would you reveal your truth to me? And so that's kind of my journey um, with the Lord at that age. So tell us about that process, right? Because um, after after you, you asked that question. Yeah. Because um, obviously you still have two different sides at home. Oh, for sure. You have you have one, you, like Jehovah's Witness, they don't believe in the Trinity. So I, so I have one I have one parent that doesn't believe in the Trinity and I have one that believes in the Trinity but also believes in a whole other lot of traditional things. And so I the crazy thing is is like I you know like when you first like as a kid, I think I might have said the salvation prayer every single night for like years just because you you're just you're so wanting to you know have a full understanding you just know that you want God and so I would say I was probably 10 I was probably like 12 going on 13 my mom was starting to leave a little bit of the Jehovah Witness background because my sister became very zealous for the Lord and she started praying is what she started to do she started to pray and so um I encountered the Holy Spirit around 13, you know? I like gave my heart to the Lord, but I had a legit encounter with the Holy Spirit and it wrecked me completely. And- Can you describe that experience? Yeah, I, um, there was just a call for more. And, you know, a, a pastor came and said, hey, would you like to get filled with the Holy Spirit? And I felt this nudge, like, I want whatever of God that there's available. So I went down and um, my sister came behind me and I just, I just went down and all of a sudden, like, it felt like a wind hit me, lifted my hands in this beautiful language. I didn't even know, no one had to prompt me, no one had to do anything. I just started crying and praying in this language and I could, I felt like I, like my whole body was awakened. It's the only way I'd explain it. And so um, by that point, you know, when you have a, when you have Jehovah Witness and you have Catholicism in the house, by the time I was 12, my parents had separated. So at this point, it's just me and my mom. My dad went to North New Hampshire, and so I no longer had this influence, his influence on my life like this. So I was able to really, my sister was still very much a prominent person in my life. So at that point, I was now going and asking my sister questions and asking like, how do I, how do I live this life? But the, the, that wasn't the only thing. I just, there was so much going on in my house that with this type of confusion, I mean, my brothers had strippers at the house. Like, I just had a lot of darkness. And so my only way to escape was to read the Bible. My only, my only escape was, uh, thank God for Benny Hinn and like TBN and these channels because they would be downstairs doing a whole bunch of stuff because my brothers are a lot older than me. Um, I would be in my room watching um, Christian television, and I would be in my room watching, like, I don't know if you're back in the 90s, if you remember um, these little, like, advertisements with, like, they're trying to, um, you know, to give money monthly to create, you know, hey, invest in water, you know, and then you have, like, the starving children of Ethiopia, like, crying on the, on the TV, these, like, kind of advertisements, and so I remember at that age, like, I want to go there and I want to give them water. I remember talking to the Lord about that. Like, I want to go to these places and having this heart to travel really early. So um, so I got filled with the Holy Spirit and um, I no longer really had to fight my dad so much about what I believed. Um, and I was still on this journey, but God started to pull my heartstrings. And so by the time I got into high school, there was a Christian club at my high school and I went to this Christian club, next thing I know, there's like this something called a choir of the fire. And so is these regional gatherings where teenagers come together to worship God. And they also give a call to the nations. So by the time I'm like 15 years old and they're like, hey, would you like to go to Africa? Would you like to go to Panama? Would you like to go to Thailand? Would you like to go to Romania? Would you like to preach the gospel? And I was like, yes, I want to go. Jesus send me, you know, I'm just like so on fire for Jesus. But that trip cost $5,000. And I am coming from now a single parent home. How am I gonna get there? So I just signed the papers to go. 
And I told my mom, I said, Mom, I want to go to Africa. I want to go and tell the gospel. I want to preach the gospel to Africa. She was like, girl, no, you ain't going anywhere. I said, Mom, I really believe God wants me to go. She said, and this was her, her I think she just thought this was her way out. She's like, well, I don't have the money. If the money comes, you can go. That's what she said to me. I prayed. I said, Lord, if you let me go, I'll go. Let me tell you, I had to have that money in a month. $5,000 came in in a month, and my mom could not say anything because that was her, you know, you can't go if you get money. So by the time I was, I was 15 going on 16, I am now on a plane trip for a month to Africa to tell people about Jesus, sleeping on a floor, going to the bathroom in holes, like got three showers. Like I am like just going for it, you know? And I see every person I lay hands on healed. I mean, deaf ears, totally transformed, whole families getting saved. So I am getting wrecked, you know what I mean? Like they think they're getting wrecked, because they are, because they're meeting Jesus, but I'm getting just as wrecked as these people are in Africa. And I'm thinking to myself, my God is real, you know? So the, it solidified this even more, like Jesus is real, Jesus loves, Jesus came to heal, save, and deliver. I'm seeing people in their deathbed come up and get out of, out of their deathbed for him, you know? And so, you know, at 15, 16 years old, you have that encounter, you come back to school, you're not the same. You're not fighting, you're not t- thinking about Jordans and you're not thinking about what, you, what you're gonna wear or what you're gonna do, but I just saw a kid who has parasites in their fingers begging me for food and all I can give them is Jesus. You know, like it's a totally different paradigm shift of like what's important in life, right? So by that time, um, I'm 15, 16, when on my first mission trip, I said, God, I want to go again. So the next year, I was in Panama in the Darien jungle with the Kuna Indians, sleeping on hammocks, <laughs> going to the bathroom in holes, you know, taking showers and rivers to preach the gospel to people who have never heard it before. And so once again, the Lord wrecked me again. And so now I am encountering the salvation power of Jesus, but I'm also encountering Holy Spirit, like never before. And so at that part, I was marked. You couldn't tell me anything. I was marked for the gospel. I was marked for him. And so that commit, that, that call, go ye to all the nations and preach the gospel, like was such a real, making disciples, such a real, a real, um, those words were living for me. And so I wanted to lay down my life on the mission field for him. And so I, you, I just saw something so precious and so real that how much God loves the broken, how, how much God loves the, the, the orphan, the widow, the, he loves them so much and he will do whatever he can. He will send me, a little a girl from Maryland, <laughs> all the way to a, a dairy and jungle, five hours into a jungle to preach the gospel so that you can know it and that you can, he, He's speaking to me that he's thinking about them. He's thinking about me as well. But he got me saved at five years old so that I can, I can come meet you and tell you about him. I mean, totally, absolutely blows your mind, right? So I was really, I was really wrecked at that point. But to go on the story of the confusion of my house, I'm still encountering God. I'm still loving Jesus but there's still levels of confusion that I'm still constantly dealing with. And so um, you wanna know if demons are real? They are, because I saw them. I saw them on the mission field. I saw you know, a mountain woman with her eyes totally black and has no life in her because there's demons in her. I saw it and we think, you know, oh, that's only over in these countries that these people have these things, but yeah, they're dealing with it, but I'm here and I'm still dealing with like mental torment in some form. So um, so by the time I'm 18, I am now saying, God, I will go with, so now I'm like, I wanna be a missionary, that's my call. So I, I go to Texas to this uh, ministry, it's called um, Global Expeditions. And so I go, I come a part of something called the Honor Academy. I give my a life 
a year of my life to this training um, place where you're trained in leadership, you're trained to pretty much be a missionary and to live your life for God. Um, and there are hundreds of, of, of teens just, I mean, my age, 18, loving Jesus, want to do the same. But I'm finding there is a lot of confusion in Christianity in general. And so I am, people are preaching, but I'm confused. I'm like, why can't I listen to preaching? Why can't I sit in a service and not feel like confused? Like I can't hear, it's like the words are twisting. And so thank you Jesus for deliverance because I come up, one of my best friends, her name is Audrey. Her mom comes in and she's a deliverance minister. And um, she leads me through some deliverance and the confusion breaks. And I'm so transformed that, and when I say deliverance, I'm talking about like, I could feel like a level of oppression on me and from my family, from like me and like not knowing fully how to grasp this life that we walk with Jesus. Like I, I, I loved him, I knew he was real, but why am I like so tormented sometimes? And why, when, when I know I've encountered him, I've encountered the, his salvation power. I've encountered this, so why me walking in my life, doing what I know to do right? Why am I dealing with so much? Sometimes I'm depressed, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm confused, sometimes I'm not. You know, all these like ups and downs. And so I come across this lady and she prays for me, breaks off the demonic like holes on my life and I hear chains fall. I hear them clear. Like when she's praised for me, I hear the chains fall, just like that. And it was like I came out of it, everything was a little bit more brighter. Everything was just a little bit more sharper. Everything was just a little bit more clearer. And it changed me forever. So from that point on, I was marked for ministry. I said, this is my testimony, that I was once confused, but now I'm not. You know, I was once in a dark place and now I'm not. And now I can, he's given me the ability to help others. And I'm gonna do whatever I can to help others in the same situation. And so from there, I was now a missionary, but now I wanna get people delivered from darkness, even in the midst of Christianity. And so that's kind of how my journey was. So all that kind of happened until I was about 22, 21, 22. And so uh, that was the beginnings of me being in ministry and God wrecking me through my youth and teens. How did your relationship with your mother develop? Because obviously, you know, as you mentioned, you're coming back from these trips and it's, it's a different encounter. Oh right? my God. And, and the religion that your, your mom was coming from, they, they, miss, they don't really believe in that. And so how did that uh, affect your relationship with her? So my mom was, my mom actually, even though she was a Jehovah Witness, she just, she didn't like, she was a, uh, a Baptist when she married my dad. You have to understand my mom is, she had me at 42. So she comes from a generation where those days people didn't have Bibles to read them. You went to a church and they interpreted the Bible for you. And so when you went to the Catholic church in those days, they just read the scripture. You weren't able to take the Bible home and read it yourself and it becomes life to you that way. So when my mom married my dad, that's the kind of Catholicism she came across. But my mom wanted truth. She wanted to know like, who is God? Can you explain him to me? Can you not not just go to a, a Catholic service and go through the rituals and leave, right? So um, in those days, Jehovah Witnesses were the only ones knocking on people's doors to sit down with you and explain scripture to you. So my mom became a Jehovah Witness because of those reasons. She just wanted to read it and know it herself, if that makes sense. So it wasn't I wouldn't say she was like this argumentative, like this is the way it is. I think that when she started to see Jesus manifest in me and my sister, something shifted. 
And so it was no longer, my dad on the other hand wanted to convince me what he believed, but my mom wasn't trying to. She was in her own place of, I just don't get it. How, explain to me like the Trinity. Like I, where is this, like, so she was a little bit more um, wanting to understand and wanting to know, but she was still dealing with confusion. So as, I mean, that testimony of me going to Africa solidified it for her. Like some things for her were like, hold up, there's something to this. Like my daughter is experiencing miracles right here. Bro, that's all it takes, man, is for somebody to see the light in you, for them to stop being curious, being, you know what I'm saying? Because <clears throat> if a person is confused about religion or who God is or whatever the case may be, and then you're really experiencing the love from God, that is going to attract that. You know what I'm saying? You know that dark, darkness loves the light. You know what I'm saying? Even though it likes to stay in the dark, it's a light is very, very attractive. You know what I'm saying? And the light is always going to outweigh the darkness, whatever the case may be. Um, just her growing up and, and having two parents that had two different religions um, well, definitely is going to create division in the household. You know what I'm saying? And I was just talking to a female on the phone. She's a Jehovah Witness. I told her I was raised a Baptist. And um, she believes in certain things. I believe in certain things. And I just cut it short. I said, I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> And I met her in the gym, bro, and it's like, I think about every female I talk to, they got something different going on with them, whatever the case may be, but um, her story is very interesting, and the thing is, man, that God still had her hand, God still had his hand on her at the end of the day, even though the two parents were trying to tug a war with her when it comes to religion, and um, that's how God shows up, man, you know what I'm saying, and it takes one person one person to change everything for everybody, man. But let's get back into it, though. So um, so what started to happen is, as any mom would, she just wanted me to do well. And so she knew I loved church, and she would take me to the church that I wanted to go. So there was no kind of, I didn't have to fight her too much in that, right, in that way. And so as I began to, she saw the hand of God in my life, and so she just became a real strong support. Um, she eventually, she eventually uh, renounced um, Jehovah Witness and became a born again believer, and um, yeah, she's been one of my top supporters since uh, since then. Uh, my dad eventually, my dad, I remember we were and I was in Texas in this whole training thing I was in. I remember him calling me, and he was like, "Can you just get baptized? I don't care what you do, but just get baptized because they believe that if you are." that I, you have to be baptized into the church to be to go to heaven. And so his concern was, I don't care what you do, just get baptized into the church, you know, into ca the Catholic church. And I, I, I remember talking to my dad and just being like, dad, when, I, when I'm gonna get baptized in water is because I'm doing it because I wanna get baptized in, into, in, into what those scripture talks about, to be saved and be baptized. And so, <clears throat> And I wanted to do it out of a place of understanding what that was. So we had a lot of little fights that way of religious arguments, um, which were really stressful for me at the time. But um, I was still young, but as I got older and I got married, and I married, I married um, my husband, um, and he started to see God manifest in my life, at that point, now he's telling his friends and family who, I, you know, now he's starting to see, I don't quite get everything you're doing, Ashley, but I know God is on it. Like that's, then that's what started to happen is that I didn't even have to argue or fight what I believe. All I had to do was be it, show it, and God did the rest, right? And so before I knew, my dad was calling my, my, my husband for prayer. My dad was, do you know, like then all of a sudden, like this shift was like, I respect where you are. And I know that God is moving in your life and that you're doing great things for the Lord. And so by that point, um, this point, my, my parents pretty much really respect where we are. Um, gave my, even my dad giving my husband my hand, you know, like that was a big deal as well. 
um, just even knowing what what my husband represents, and he was traveling the nations and loves loves God. Say less, man. We ain't even got to say no more, man. That's how amazing God is. You can be raised by two different generations, one believe in one other religion, one believe in one other religion, but that child is going to be touched by God. And that child can change the whole dynamic of your family. The fact that the mother was confused, the daddy was in a different religion, she brought everybody together, you know what I'm saying, to be that one real religion. There's a lot of false religions out here, you know what I'm saying, and I'm not going to even get into that discussion, but I truly, truly believe there's, a, there's one God one guy all these religions out here are meant to divide us from what's really real you know what i'm saying and the fact that this young lady that is from virginia you know what i'm saying where i'm from virginia you know what i'm saying her testimony is amazing man and um like i said when you just come into a household with two different religions it's going to divide the family you know what i'm saying but luckily she found out who god truly is she's married uh, the husband can see a lot in her. That's what God will get. That's what God will give you. She he'll give you exactly the desires of your heart and what you truly need when you try, start following him, man. But listen, guys, man, y'all comment down below exactly what y'all think about this video. And at the end of my videos, and all of my new subscribers that subscribe, man, I love y'all, man. Y'all keep commenting down below what y'all want. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of my videos, I'll say stay inspired, stay motivated, stay grinding. To next video, I'm out here, peace.